The attack against Republican lawmakers during a congressional baseball practice in Virginia left many fearing for their safety. It also sparked a larger debate about protecting our lawmakers. Congressman Mo Brooks was eyewitness to the crime and on the shooter's hit list, and he is now taking matters into his own hands. This week, introducing a bill that would allow members of Congress to be armed. Congressman Brooks joins me now for an exclusive interview. So, Congressman, before we discuss the details of your bill, you actually gave aid to one of the wounded at the baseball practice. Tell us about that. Well, Zach Barth had a bullet that went through his calf, uh, and I was able to uh, take off my belt, and we were collectively able to use it as a tourniquet. And then also Steve Scalise, when he was in the right field grass, at some point, um, our congressman from Cincinnati, who's also a physician, uh, Brad Winstrup, asked me to apply pressure to the wound in order to try to minimize the blood loss. And one of the things that could have been more helpful, in your opinion, was that if some of the congressmen were armed. If they were armed, how would they have been able to neutralize that specific shooter in that instance? And I was at the third base dugout, in between third base dugout and home plate, uh, when the shooting began, ran around uh, home plate, hid behind the uh, batting cage for uh, some period of time, and then sprinted to the first base dugout. The shooter, while this was going on, was aiming towards second base, right field, from just past the third base dugout. What that tells me is if one of our congressmen or senators had had a firearm, they could have retraced the steps that I took, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps me or somebody else, uh, got into that third base dugout, and while the shooter is discharging his firearm at, say, Zach Barth in right field, uh, ended the threat right then and there. Yeah, you would have had a good window of opportunity in that situation. So the bill that you've introduced, this says what? The congressman can have a concealed carry permit and he's allowed or she is allowed to use that anywhere in the district? Because I know the district has very stringent gun laws, correct? It empowers congressmen and senators, should they so choose, to be able to carry a concealed weapon anywhere in the United States, oh. with the exception of in the presence of the president or the vice president, where you have Secret Service protection, right. or if you're in the United States Capitol, where we are protected by the Capitol Police. So by way of example, I could have carried a weapon on my bicycle through the District of Columbia, gone to Virginia where we practiced, and not have had to have worried about whatever the Virginia laws are, whatever the Alexandria city laws are or what the District of Columbia laws are because of this federal statute that would have empowered us as congressmen and senators yeah. to be able to defend ourselves. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I have a report right here. It says 30 Republican congressmen have been attacked or threatened just since May. In one instance, a woman who was crazy about an Obamacare repeal vote tried to run a congressman off the road. Um, so it looks like you guys need protection, but you know what other people are going to say. They're going to say, oh, you're going to have all these armed congressmen. You know, isn't that even more dangerous? How would you respond to that? Oh, I, I don't have such low regard for our, uh, my colleagues in the House or in the Senate. Uh, for someone to state that a congressman or senator who is armed for self-defense is suddenly a threat to commit a robbery or a murder out on the streets of Washington, D.C. or Northern Virginia, I find that a ludicrous, uh, insubstantial argument. Right. Right. I mean, if anyone's robbing anybody in Congress, the taxpayers are getting robbed. So uh, <laughs> they don't need a weapon they for do that. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, before I let you go, uh, your colleague Steny Hoyer, uh, Democrat in, uh, in Maryland, he had this to say about, you know, protecting congressmen. My recommendation would be to have a general fund within the legislative budget, which is dedicated to security of the members of their staff. Now, it seems like that would cost a lot of money, yet your proposal would cost nothing, correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, the Congressional Self-Defense Act merely empowers congressmen and senators under certain circumstances to be able to carry a concealed weapon. They would have to purchase it. They would have to get the kind of training that they believed was adequate in order to, for them to be adept at using a firearm. Now, it might be we need to do some version of both. I don't know. Yeah. But it's becoming clearer and clearer that congressmen and senators are indeed high-profile targets, and we ought to, at a minimum, have a right to defend ourselves. Absolutely. Congressman, we're going to 
you know, follow the bill as it moves up and um, want to see who votes for it, who doesn't vote for it. So Waters World will uh, keep everybody posted on that. And again, thank you very thank much, you. Congressman Brooks. Thank you, Jesse. Governor Ventura and I were talking pot at the Cannabis Expo when it went a little sideways. The simple question I asked that triggered this response. You know, that's a question and I expect it from someone from Fox.